Is all fair. Oh, it says live. We are live. Here we go. Welcome, flakers, morons, two and a half Wiyaji fans. Uh, there are four of them, I actually. <laughs> what? There are four of them now. They're, they're increasing. Oh, no. it's, it, okay. All the hard work fellows use is paying off. There are a few fans of, uh, of this particular show. Most of them, of course, come for Victor's good looks. Yes. <laughs> but. <laughs> and, 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 but not the smell of whiskey. And leave well, soon after. Well, that's a special bonus that we get. Ah. Actually, check this out. You guys will be surprised. You know what this is? Uh, <laughs> it's whiskey. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's Balvin, Balvin, which is sold out on the internet, but for some reason they had a bottle of it across the uh, Bronx chair. They oh, yeah. <laughs> and you can't get it on the internet right now for some reason. Well, I'm sure you can somewhere, but... Uh, you, you, Victor, you always score at that place, don't you? It was recommended to me by one of my moron followers. Look there. Oh, this is like you got your polished knob there, didn't you? Uh, yeah, the old knob. Yeah. There we go. Someone is welcome. Some makers, moron, two and a half the guys. It could be me. Uh, there are four of them. I actually. Who's got the video uh, running? There are four of them now. They're they're increasing. Uh, it's a, uh, all okay. the hard work, fellas. That was me, sorry. <laughs> it's always you. It's me. I gotta give Hiko something to bitch about. It's always you, Victor. <laughs> I, I swear, he does it on purpose. He just, it's like a catchphrase. It's like, what you talking about, Willis? It's like, Victor, yeah. turn your freaking speakers <laughs> off. This is the Peter mug. Sing. Oh, wow. Are you salty, Papa? Oh, not the Peter, not the Peter Martin mug. Okay. No, no, not the Peter. Is there a Peter Martin mug? No. Yeah, the J-Vlog man. I didn't know he had a he had a mug, but well, he he should he deserves oh, one. Shot, shot glass, sorry. Mm. Yeah. Sorry. So usually, usually we have our guest begin with a song. Hmm. But today we're going to have him begin with a poem. Mm -hmm. Well, right? I, you okay to break break tradition? Go get him, Kurt. Is that all right? Okay. Well, well actually, actually, you might be disappointed. I I actually didn't uh, compose a poem. Instead, I wanted to just share a quote that I thought was. Uh, uh, kind of relevant to my situation, you know. I'm about to, if anybody that doesn't know, I'm about to leave Japan. Yes, your thumbs up, your fingers up. Let me introduce that quote. Ready? Okay. Okay. Bring a tear to our eyes, Kurt. Okay. Please go ahead. All right. Well, this is by uh, uh, Terry Pratchett. He's the author of A Hat Full of Sky, where it appears. I'll just go ahead and read it slowly. Um, it kind of captures the spirit of kind of one of the reasons that I'm going back to the States. He says, why do you go away so that you can come back, so that you can see the place you came from with new eyes and extra colors? And the people there see you differently too. Coming back to where you started is not the same as never leaving. Now, Very true. Now, for, for, yeah, for, for me, I've always, I've always uh, been a restless person and uh, never been quite satisfied with uh, staying too, lingering too long in any one spot. And uh, I've always found that the pleasure of departure is uh, augmented uh, in turn eventually by return. And in a way, I'm going, uh, I'm going to experience that now as I take my family back to the place that I was raised, not just Los Angeles, but the very community where I spent my boyhood. And it's going to be an interesting uh, experience, and that quote captures that essence, I think. So, so wow. the the actual so the the community where you spent your boyhood was that like South Central, which part of Los Angeles? Oh yeah, that that, that was Com it was Compton. Yeah, I was I was really? the original uh, <laughs> you were, original no gangbanger. Kurt, Kurt Bell straight out of Compton. Yeah, yeah. Well, I actually I have an amazing story of out of Compton that'll that'll freak you out. That if if you, if you ever want to hear it. Freaked it's, out. Yeah, do you want to hear? Do you want to hear it? Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. This straight is, out of Compton. Hell yes. Yeah. This is. This is. This. I mean, I'll. I'll try to keep it brief. I was taking. I was in. I was in college in Los Angeles, and I was in a uh, speech communication doing a uh, class. I can't remember what it, what it was. And the professor wanted us to explore uh, racial studies, and I came up. I had just read this book called Black Like Me. I don't know if any of you guys have read it, where a guy basically impersonated a black man. This is Debito Arudo. I can't remember the author's name. <laughs> I, 
That'd be but tough. He, very, very non-PC these days. But anyway, he, long story short, he'd been personated a black man to see what it was like, a white man, a person a black man to see what it was like, and then wrote this book. I came up with the brilliant idea that I could do the same thing. Oh. And I spent a day figuring out how to how to darken my face. I got a, I got a wig. I got some, an outfit and everything, and I made myself into a black man. You're and kidding. I, no, no, and I test myself and out. I, I drove my, my Camaro over to my, my friend Chuck Schlossberg's house, who may see this video because he's a friend on Facebook, and he, he's, he had this upper-class upper, upper class Jewish neighborhood uh, residence, and I went in and I... I appreciate the racial slurs on this channel. Uh, really? Am I, am I doing that? You said he was Jewish, right? That's... Yeah. Is that bad? Um, no, I ignored him, Kurt. I, 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 I was into the upper class myself. <laughs> so, so anyway, so anyway, I knocked, I knocked on the doorbell, and uh, his mother came to the door, who knew me, and she didn't recognize me. So I figured I had passed muster, right? So I'm, I'm ready to go. Oh, wait, so a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You passed muster by scaring uh, an upper class, uh, an old Jewish, Jewish woman. <laughs> no, I thought, I thought, <laughs> I, thought of old well, I thought if she knew someone who knew me. Uh, and she was the only one I could think of, someone who knew me. I didn't expect her to answer. I expected Chuck, my friend, to answer. I thought if she didn't, and she didn't recognize me. So anyway, so I hopped in the car. I drove from Upland, where I was living, all the way down to Compton. And I got off the freeway, and, you know, really, that's when fun, the fun really started. So I started, I just drove around the streets for a while just to see what would happen. Nothing really happened. So I parked the car, and I went for a walk. And uh, just started going along. And guys... Guys, I didn't fool. I cannot believe you were alive today. I, I did not fool anybody no. right down there. I mean, they saw mm. right through me right away. And of course. People, How could you be black? Oh, yeah. People, no, no. I heard people yelling across the street after a while. I was walking down, and I heard this one guy yelling, look at that, a white black man. And I started getting followed by a group of, a, a group of people. And I no, made a beeline. Sorry, the, the correct term for a group, you mean a gang? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It was just they were curious. It was a, no, it was a group of people no, that were no, curious. Just because a lot of black kids are following. Hey, he didn't say they were racist. He said a group of people I I, to be. I don't know if it was a gang. Were they, were they snapping their fingers? No, that. Anyway, I, I I got in my car and I made I made I I got out of there. Anyway, I got back. You pulled over by the police professor. I got. He told me I was an idiot, but I got a high score on the class on the grade. So. <laughs> it was pity. That was a pity score. Probably. You know, test, he, would he, have been, test would have been if you got in the car and tried to drive away. How many times you were pulled over? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I can't say that I really experienced what it was like because I don't think I fooled anybody, you know? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, credit to you for trying. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. so what, what is the, I mean, can I ask, what, what is the, can, where, where, where is the home? Where are you going back to? I mean. Yeah, what, sure. No problem. Um, I'm going to be living in, we haven't quite narrowed it down to either Torrance or, or Redondo Beach, which is part of what's called the South Bay area of Los mm -hmm. Angeles. You've yeah. probably heard of, you know, Santa Monica and Venice Beach. Those right. are the, yeah, the famous ones. Right, right next door, a little, little south of those. I used uh, to work yeah. out on Venice Beach. Oh, did you? Did you really? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Lied. <laughs> so we chose this area, Hiko. You know, I'm, yeah. I don't, I, Jim and Jim and Victor both know this re reason. We chose this area specifically because it's the uh, number two most uh, highest Japanese population in the United States. The number one is Honolulu. Oh. Right. Okay. So, so it's so got it's a huge California Japanese case. commercial, uh, Japanese supermarkets, uh, hair salons, uh, medical services, uh, bookstores, everything. So wow. a lot of huge Japanese people there. Mm. And the and the other and the other reason is that it because of this the school system there has a, has a familiarity with uh, uh, Asians coming over like my daughter and who need to acclimate into the education system there and so I've been in contact with administration at these various schools and they've assured me that they're going to help me to uh, and help our daughter to uh, get uh, to you know kind of make it into the system more easily. Yeah. Oh, how good is her English? How good is your wife's English, and how good is your daughter's English? Yeah. My my wife's English, I would I would say, um, what she did when we worked lived in the states, she did customer support uh, on the phone, and pe people regularly mistook her for a native speaker. Oh wow! And, and um, my daughter's English is 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 very good, not native level. Her spoken English, her comprehension is you know I'd say it's eighty five ninety percent. Her written, her ability to read and write, though, are, are, are very poor. And so we've really got to focus on that. So, well, what grade is she now? Is it, the yes, the she's timing in is interesting. Junior high school, first year. 
So she's 13. A little bit on the late side then in that case. It'll be a little bit, of, I mean, it's one thing, and I know a lot of couples in Tokyo have kids or whatever, and it's always that timing from when they switch to the local system. If they can afford to put them in an international school, what mm. age to do that or what age to leave to try to get the best balance. But it's always, what I hear from a lot of people, there seems to be a consensus that around the fourth grade seems to be like the easiest transition. Yeah, um, but yeah. Well, the, a little bit harder the, after that. Although we like to think that our daughter's interest is foremost in our minds, the timing really was more based on the opportunity than anything else. There was simply no opportunity prior to this. This job opportunity came along at this time, and prior to that, well, yeah. And if I can step in here just on this chance. one, uh, a, a year ago, this was Kurt's five-year plan. Mm. Oh, and so, yeah, that's right. That's to leave in five years, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. And so once I began to actualize on that and started yeah. putting the word out, you know, you know, then uh, then things started done happening. And it's amazing how doors begin to open when that happens. There I should take a five-year plan to like sleep with Angelina Angelina Jolie. Maybe I'll... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Victor put that word out decades ago. <laughs> Visualize it, see it, do it, regret it. That's his plan. That's how most of these things. It's a fucked up system. Get drunk. <laughs> wake up in a ditch, okay? That's Spill the whiskey all over you. <laughs> well, uh, I, okay. I, got a quite, I got a question about. Oh, this is something actually. Speaking of, I wanted to bring Angelina Jolie into this for a reason. When she, this is this is you're gonna, just. You don't need a reason. Just bear with me for a second. Now, when she had her breast uh, operated, a lot of people claim she was brave. And I thought, no, she's doing the right thing. You know, she's 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 surviving, right? And I got a couple comments on. I've seen a couple comments. Now, I, you know, I love you, Kurt, but um, would you say you are brave to be doing this? Uh, a couple of people claim you are brave, but I I would say you're lucky. <laughs> well, not not just lucky, of course, because you you did earn the position, but. Um, I I don't. In Japan, do you feel it's a it's a, is it scary? Do you feel like you're doing some uh, brave? Um, the, the, you know the word that comes to mind, and it, it may not quite capture the essence perfectly, but it is more um, routine. Um, and the reason I say that word is that my, this is the fourth time that my wife and I have crossed the Pacific. will be the fourth time we've crossed the Pacific together. So we've actually, that's why I'm using the word routine. It's like it's been, it's been almost every, let's see, every 10, seems like, not, it couldn't be 10 years ago. You just, were old. <laughs> you would have gotten we, mad at ten. <laughs> we just, yeah, yeah, exactly. We did, we did it the first time. We met when we were twenty-four. We we came across to, we met in the states. We came to Japan when we were twenty-six together. We went back to the states at twenty-nine, and oh, we really? then we came back to Japan. then we came back to Japan at thirty whatever, thirty-seven, and now we're going back. So it's the fourth time. So it almost feels now like a like a like a bit of ping pong going on. You know, it's like it's time to go back. I'll tell you this though, it's it, this is definitely far scarier. Um, when we did this the last time, uh, with the last two times, I didn't have I didn't bat, I didn't think one thing about it. I didn't have any sleepless nights. It was just an adventure. This time I, I'm I'm I can't sleep at night. I'm I'm worried sick. Even though I'm going, last time we went over, I didn't go to a job. I went with I had uh, three thousand bucks and uh, that was it. And I went over and I slept on the beach, and um, <laughs> got out the want ads and looked for a job. I had no prospects, and I well, didn't, you worry didn't have one a bit. job, but you you didn't have a daughter either. That's right. That's right. <laughs> So th this time I'm going back with a, a job, but it's it is it, as Jim just pointed out. It is all about our daughter. If 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 it was just Yumiko and I, this would be not a problem at all. But I am I am really worried about her well-being and how she's going to adapt. Mm. Oh, but she seems to be very um, positive about this whole experience. She's looking forward. Yeah, yeah. As much as as much as a thirteen-year-old lets on, you know. So it's 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 hard to read sometimes. Uh, so. Uh, we, tr you know, her mother and I, are trying to gauge things as much as we can, and and she only understands things, you know, to the degree that a thirteen-year-old would. Right. It'll I be have, one thing when we get there and actually let this begin to unfold. I have a friend who is uh, uh, actually a fan of your videos. I've known her for a long time, long before YouTube, uh, through, you know, but but she's on Facebook or whatever, and she's a mother of a now university 
graduate and recently married, recently had a first uh, child actually. She's a, mm. she's a mother of a half Japanese. She's married to a doctor and has lots of her life now. And we had the discussion about um, ra raising the half Japanese son in a rural part of Japan mm -hmm. and asking, you know, were you worried about, uh, you know, your son standing out too much or getting bullied for being, you know, different? And she, I remember, it was, you know, it's an interesting question. She gave the response, and she says, "Yeah, I know a lot, a lot of people worry about that, but you know, with kids, in the end of the day, if it's if it's not because they're half, it's because they're not good at sports, or it's because they've got a big nose. And you know, you can only protect them so much. You've got to let them figure it out for themselves." Yeah. yeah. And I was kind of like, "Wow, you know, like, yes, that's right. I mean, there's a lot of people. It's it's, it's natural that you have fear and concerns, and you want to protect them. But at the same time, you know, every everyone, well." Mostly everyone survives, <laughs> and, and, and something everyone's got to do themselves in life. You know, as much as you want to try to, you know, be a parent, it's a, it's a real struggle. And of course, I, now I, you know, now I'm going to be facing that as well. I'm still at an early stage, and it's not as, as scary yet. But that's a very big step that you're going into. So I, I can really appreciate that. It's interesting that you. you, that go, you sorry. Go ahead, Mark. Go ahead, Kurt. It's no, no, no. It's your show. Okay. Um. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned that because. That has been a, ever since about first grade, that mm. has been a, a consistent issue in our lives. And mm. it has only grown more so as the years have, have gone by, especially the, we thought, we thought the fifth grade was bad, and then the sixth grade came along, and then, mm. and then now in the first grade of junior high school, it's really bad now. Mm. Um, the, the, the being singled out for being different, specifically for uh, not being completely Japanese, so to speak, mm -hmm. and I, in a way, I'm I'm looking for. Well, it's not necessarily uh, negative. Uh, in this case, it is. In our yeah. in our experience, it's 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 it's. I'm, I'm I have to watch my words, guys. I've got I've got yeah. the person in question sleep sitting laying right behind me, okay. so so I have to if I, if it sounds like I'm guarding my speech, that's why. Um. So so it has been it has been very bad. I mean, very bad. Yeah. And I'm not looking. For, I'm not. I'm not going to miss that one bit. And and going into the the, the demographic at our new community mm -hmm. is your typical, your typical United States demographic where uh, people of color are are in in Southern California especially are the norm, and uh, people with mixed languages and heritage and background are just are just are just part of the community. And I am really looking forward. Emily is going to have problems she'll face, but I'm yeah. really looking forward to them being more normal teenage problems than simply the fact of, you know, being not that. You mm. think your daughter looks uh, half? I mean, she seems very yeah. Western-looking to me. Yeah, that's part of the problem. I mean, in Japan, yeah, I can just yeah, but no, in Cal, but in Cal, in California, she'll just be one of the gang. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. Although you know, I mean, again. You can't yeah. always presume. Sometimes it does, and sometimes you know, geography won't necessarily you know be a solution for everything. But you're right. I mean, you know, and some the change of scenery is definitely it's an opportunity to to have another go. You know, to see how things go. And you know, I mean, I I I, I myself come from an upbringing where I moved house thirty. Oh, I'm currently in my thirty seventh house. Uh, wow, so, that may be more than me. I've got I've been through at least twenty. Feel, um, well, you know, you're, you're, Hiko, it's it's I, it's not that I expect no problems, but I expect yeah. new problems. Well, that's and, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and it'll it'll be nice to have this particular one over and done with for the mm. most part. Yeah, yeah. I haven't I haven't enjoyed this. It's been very ugly. No, well, I'm sorry to hear that. And, and you do and you do hear that. I mean, that happened. And you think, I mean, and honestly, and I say this to people, and I uh, you. you this is one thing I say. Like I, I, I couldn't live. I couldn't imagine living with my family outside of Tokyo because at least in Tokyo, there's it's enough of a internationally. My kid doesn't stand out quite so much. You know, in any class you go to anywhere, there's a few kids like him. Right. But is is, is that a factor? I mean, I, I, I don't actually know. I know you're in Shizuoka somewhere. Are you, how, how rural is the area that you're in? I mean, and does that play? Do you think is that a factor or is it? it uh, it's well, we're, I wouldn't classify us as rural at all. It's definitely yeah. it's definitely urban. But yeah. um, there are at most uh, one other person like her in her school at in any school. one time. Like in the entire class. school. Oh, yeah. okay. oh no, 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 no. Well, she's yeah, is kind of known for lots of Brazilians and lots of you know Peruvians and. But There's more like... down in the Hamamatsu area, I think. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. and a lot of the Brazilians and Peruvians are Nisei, so they look Japanese more than 
than an oh, American mix would. Emmy. No, 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 they're not. Say hi? But just the the, the initial <laughs> image. Yeah, I know what you mean. They look they look more like they can fit in. Emmy, right. yeah. Emmy, yeah. I want you to show everyone everyone your face when when Chris she, says I love you. She can't. She oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. She can't hear you. It's Victor saying hi to you. <laughs> okay, she says she she just uh, nodded hello. It's just, it's just the cool crazy uncle, people on the internet. Yeah, she's cool uncle bit. fat bastards here too. Oh uh, yeah, she smiles when she sees she's you, Jim. She just smiled just now. She saw you on the screen. <laughs> she, she, she loves you, Jim. Oh, I went up last week, and uh, Kurt, she was walking by, and Kurt said, "Emily, I love you," <laughs> and she gave him the funniest dirty look, like. <laughs> Like yeah, you're yeah. such a loser. Yeah, yeah. No, I we we, we, we I love to, I love to tease her. <laughs> but I I, I, I but you know uh, honestly though, guys, I another thing that I'm really looking forward to though um, is introducing her to this other half of her heritage. Um, yeah. She's been she was raised. She spent her first three years in the United States, but she doesn't have any memory of that. So at this point, she's basically a Japanese teenager. With um, an understanding of that she's got this other side, and I can't wait to to show her that. And I know that there's going to be some things that are come as a shock to her, and I know that there's a lot of stuff she's going to miss. But the California, especially I, if I can just go on, I just love the California beach culture, and mm -hmm. I can't I can't wait to get her to make. I'm hoping to make a, a California beach girl out of her. So it just <laughs> it's okay. Do you surf? Oh yeah, you betcha. You oh, betcha. good man, good man. Okay, you can't, you can't, you can't. motorcycle, surfs. What, what, what else do you do, Kurt? Uh, I, I do just about anything as long as it doesn't involve heights. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, you betcha. I skateboard. Well, I, I've always grown up near the beach, and um, all the, where we're going to be living now is going to be about you know two blocks from the beach. And nice. it's a really wow. nice beach, so I'll, I'll be in the water. You can you can you can swim in December in the beach there, yeah. so I'll, I'll be in the water all the time. Great. Oh man, hey, that's nice. Um, I, I really want to I really want to get uh, everyone to know this part of Kurt, although many people know the story. But I like Kurt. If you don't mind me bugging you about this, could you tell everyone your how you, how you lost a million dollars? Yeah, sure. that's yeah, a great sure. story. I think. Yeah, I mean a lot, a million dollars. This is how this is how Kurt lost a million dollars. Well, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll 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 nutshell it. But in short, I was uh, I I lucked my way into the uh, dot com uh, situation, and found myself as one of the first employees in a company that went on to grow to two thousand employees and and uh, have a stock price stock valuation of over two hundred and ten dollars a share. This is not YouTube. This is not YouTube. This is not YouTube. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna. I don't think I'll mention the name of the company. But um, we started off as very small, and, and we we went public at at about you know a dollar a share, or something like that. And then uh, once we reached 215, just about everybody that I I sat I worked with, we were all millionaires, and 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 I think one or two billionaires, and really? yeah yeah and. <laughs> Yeah, and it was an amazing time, and, and and scads and scads of hundreds of millionaires. You know, I mean, people worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Wow. Um, and so that this transformation, where I went from being a guy with a beat up pickup truck to suddenly having more money than I knew what to do with. Not just a beat up. You you it's actually, terrible. Willie and I were discussing this. What did you live in? You lived in a Frito Lay truck or a ice cream truck? What was it? Yeah, it was a Frito Lay potato chip delivery truck, a 1963 uh, Chevrolet step van. But that was a diff that was different. That was when I was in college. I lived on that on the beach. So, so you could have upgraded to like a Doritos bus or something. I definitely could. Have a, lot more, a lot more room, right. a lot more leg room than Doritos. So, so to, to finish off that story, basically, uh, you know, the old adage of easy come, easy go, and, and, a, and a buck that you don't really, you didn't really earn, I kind of lucked into it. You don't really appreciate it the same way. And it, it, within, the, within the course of uh, about five to seven years, I managed to simultaneously burn through it, be a, fool my way through it, and, uh, and, and, and waste, waste a heck of a lot of it until it was all gone. And, and then some. <laughs> so it's like Booster's millions by the sounds of it. It wasn't that you lost it. You actually just managed to... TKO Sam, did you lose it TKO Sam style? You, went, you know, hookers and blow? Was that how you did it? Or? Um, without the hookers or the blow, but yes. 
Um, no, I, no, I, I, I. Oh, you are sitting it. right behind you. <laughs> yeah, without the hookers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, it was honest. Well, he to said gosh. the right thing. It was honest to gosh. There was, there was no anything that I wanted. I just bought. And uh, there was no consideration for the consequences, and uh, uh, or the or, I know that feeling or anything. Know, and here's the thing, and, and you know when, when Kurt says "honest to gosh," that he really means it when he says that there were no hookers of love. <laughs> yeah, there were none. Yeah, no. But, 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 but because you felt like it. Something I mean, you... the closest they came down to that, I missed this party. There was one party. We had some amazing parties. There was one party I remember I went to. With Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman in it. Well, the, no, the, there was. It was just a group of the group of the people in the in the group, and I remember that one guy got stuck with the bill for the party, and someone had slipped in, uh, ordered a ten thousand dollar bottle of champagne. Oh my God! And and the CEO of the company got the bill. Wow, and sounds so, appropriate. Yeah, so I mean, this was the kind of thing where you know you're just you know the CEO is going to be picking the bill, so you get out the thing and you tell the guy, the major D, you know, what's the most the rarest, most expensive bottle of champagne you've got? Well, it's a mistake. Yeah. Let's take that, you know. And it was no big deal, you know. That's so that that's the closest we got to hookers and below. <laughs> oh, but, oh, but we did give our. This is interesting. With the company did give. Porsche 911s out as uh, as employee perks, you know, like if you could get the, if you could get like the most people to come. There was I remember that there was this one deal where who could get the most people to do something, and the prize was a, a brand new Porsche 911. I mean, this was it was a ridiculous time. It sounds like the company swimming pool would have been like the Scrooge McDuck kind of pool. Oh, just okay. Filled with <laughs> oh, guys, we had our own Starbucks inside the company, inside the office, and it was all free. You just walk up any time and get any Starbucks. The woman that worked at the barista, she made so much in tips. It was amazing. Wow. <laughs> yeah. But but then, but then contrast that with the fact that it's it's all gone. And you know, I lost company it all. Gone? What's that? Is the company gone? No, the company is doing well. Yeah, the company's doing well. In fact, um this is this was un, this was interesting for me. I basically left Japan, and in, in going back now, I'm trying to catch up with all my old friends, right? And to, and discovering how well so many of them have done in the company, you know. So one of them now is the is the is the CEO of the of a spinoff of of that company, and so many of them have vice president or president or or CEO in front of their names now. It's it's. In fact, one of them, I just caught up with him, he just retired as a vice president of Twitter for five years. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I don't think I saw it from anywhere. But so, I, so, I left and lost everything, and all my friends stayed behind and now rule the world. <laughs> well, how did you lose everything? Are they happy? Are they yeah. happy? I think they're pretty happy. <laughs> oh no, no, they're not happy. Just tell, keep telling yourself that they're not happy. Just, <laughs> <laughs> I look at their LinkedIn pictures and they're all smiling ear to ear. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so what, what, what so, did you say? How did I so lose Kurt, it? So, the that... question was, how did you lose it? Ah, um, it was it was mainly through um, really bad investment decisions on my own part. And I was I was absolute idiot. I, I played I played with the money like it was monopoly money, and I and I you know you know losing watching it rise, you know forty thousand dollars before you know our, you know a, a particular investment rise forty thousand dollars before lunch and dropped drop sixty thousand dollars by dinner didn't phase me one bit. I just like oh well we will see what happens tomorrow. And hmm. It sounds a lot actually in Japan. Um, you know, pachinko is very popular, and I've had uh, I've had coworkers and so on who are very much into that. And it's this thing when they, you know, around whenever there's a there's a pachinko area, it's like Las Vegas. They've got they've got the expensive, uh, you know, they've got the um, the girl, they've got the cap, you know, hostess bars, and they've got the yakiniku, the expensive yakiniku with the with the expensive bottles. And the whole idea is when they lose. They go to a cab of, uh, cab of joy anyway or something, and if they win and they make money, they spend their winnings <laughs> at the Yakiniku. They come mm -hmm. out of the neighborhood with the same, you know, loss in the pocket. It's just whether they feel better or not. You know but, what? You know what's strange that came out of came out of that from Mihiko uh, was that I got this. It took about three years for the rise to happen from from when I ended the company and we were had nothing, but to about three years later that we were all rich. And you, I gained this sense of invulnerability, yeah. like, like because it was a steady rise. You, the stock price just climbed and climbed and climbed, and it would have its little dips once in a while, but it would always climb back up. 
happened. I got this sense that I was invulnerable. Then the setbacks would happen, but I would overcome them, and I was and I was going to be set for life. So when setbacks started coming, I kind of ignored them for the most part, yeah. to to my own peril, and I eventually ignored them. My ignored them right into the ground. Well, yeah, it happened to a lot of people as well. I mean, around that time, and and the thing when I when I came to Japan, I what was it was it the time period of this around two thousand, or was it more recent than that? Okay, this would have been. Um, hold on, my wife's my wife's waving at me. You going to bed, sweetie? Oh, just, okay, okay. She's telling me not to not to make too much noise. Uh, I know those I know those orders well. I think, we, I think we're all married to the same woman. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the people, the neighbors, you know, all over there. Oh, let's see. The time frame would have been. Hold on, I I quit the company at I was at my height at two thousand and three. So ah, this would, I know yeah. that time period well. Yeah. Yeah. So what was interesting about that time was that was when I was just, had come to Japan and I was in my first few years here and I was working in IT although not the type of IT you were in obviously you know I was at, I was at very much at the arse end of IT but at that particular time there were a lot of so Japan's bubble you know when I was learning Japanese in the early 90s Japan was like the the economy that within 10 years was going to surpass the American economy and that you know was reteaching everyone economics mm -hmm. and then around 2000 the the where the Japanese economy is in the doldrums, and the U.S. economy was on the dot-com bubble, mm -hmm. and it was a bubble, but everyone was too scared to call it a bubble, and you had all of these American people that you would meet, anyone you would meet in Japan was telling you, you see, you've got to do things like us, and I'll say, well, look, a lot of these companies are not built on any kind of, you know, thing other than hype, and surely that's not going to last. I said, don't say that. No, it's a, it's a new it's a new school of economics. You don't I understand know that one. it. And a lot of people, a lot of people went on that ride, and a lot of people got dropped by that ride. Yeah. There, was a t there was a time period around 2000, there were a lot of people saying, see, you had a bubble, but we're not going to have a bubble because we're different. <laughs> yeah, you know, those, those arguments are the exact same ones I heard, and I'm, I'm unfortunately yeah. made myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you know, but you were, you, were, you, were in, you were in the position, and you, were, you rely on, I mean, it's a, such a psychological, it's a mass psychology, isn't it, the idea that it's going it to keep going up, and it's self-feeding. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I should have known. I should have known when no, the chair. Everyone. There was the one. Guy, there was the one moment. Uh, we, we had this. We had this forum. This where people would talk, and there was the chairman of the board, yeah. and I, he was he was like, speaking on the forum, and he he, got, he left a message. He said, "Now guys, we our, I think our stock was at two hundred dollars a share," and he said, "Guys, I just sold everything today." He says, wow. "Now that I'm now that I, now that I'm no longer inve no longer vested in the company, I don't feel it's my place to comment here. I'm withdrawing from the board." Mm -hmm. And I and I and you know in hindsight I should have realized that's the day I should have followed him you know <laughs> well yeah yeah but there, there there was there was a lot of craziness around that time and you know like that was when Enron was going crazy and you know the the board was selling their shares while telling their their employees to keep buying shares and that's right <laughs> right, yeah, right. The they were selling like that. hey uh but that's that's your first fortune mm -hmm. he lost so it when again you, when you came to Japan you mm -hmm. made another fortune which is which I, in the background here, you know, this is, these are the relics of your old fortune here, this thing here, mm. right? Mm -hmm. you, want to right. About, you want to tell us about that fortune? And how you okay. got it? That's an interesting story, too, and it involves the Yakuza. Well, that, this, that, that involved, that particular fortune is actually uh, part of the first one, because when I came to Japan oh, okay. in 2003, I had a nest egg that I used in part to to jumpstart this antique business that I did developed for five years, which was which was a real attempt, real honest attempt at a business, and I, I I really was trying to make money at it, and I was making money at it before the economy collapsed. Um, so um, really that loss was really just the very last end of losing the bigger fortune. Oh, I see. So it yeah. just trailed out. Okay. Yeah, 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 basically. And so, and then, and then I had, and then I sunk the last bit of money. Now, I, I didn't lose everything because I was lucky enough that I put a lot of money into my retirement accounts. Okay. And being what they were, I couldn't access them. So I, I still have my <laughs> retirement accounts, the, the money that I put into there, and as well as my daughter's uh, college fund. So I have those two things. Mm -hmm. but, so your but, daughter has a college fund? Yes, yeah, she does. Yeah. And, uh, Good man. So then, then the um, so then the the money that I had, that I that I left, I when the business started to go south, I threw it all at that business to try to keep it alive until that was all gone, and then you know I've told you guys about the the I got to the two months, you know I was at the end, and I could see that I was gonna 
I, I didn't know how I was going to support my family, and that was a really bad time in my life. That was the bottom. Mm -hmm. That's when I met Molly. <laughs> you got yeah. friends in low places, huh? No, uh, yeah, exactly. You got to go all the way. Molly may remember. <laughs> Hello. Molly was the worst part of my life, and then I met Molly. Hi, no, my name is my name. Huh? Well, it's interesting. Molly, not a 180, a 360. Molly will tell you that um, we were not friends at first. Isn't that no, right? Molly? I hated you. I couldn't stand you. Right. Because when I, when I got this job, I was at the end, and I got the job, and I was working with Molly. I was a broken man. I was you at, were a miserable prick. Oh, I was really, really bad. I was, I was, really? at, yeah, I was broken. And when so Molly didn't Molly saw me at my worst, and it was a slow, gradual climb to get out of that. And um, we became friends. It took about a two years, didn't it? Yeah, it took about that. I th it was so bad. He was such an asshole, such a just a prick at work. Well, what do you mean? That I, that could be, that I, that. I I wouldn't even go into the teacher's room if he was there. Yep. That's how much I didn't want to be around him. Yep. Wow. Oh, sorry, I just had to, I, I had to come back to that point. But to be self to be introduced to everybody as uh, "Hello, my name is Rock Bottom." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, been there. How how was he an asshole? He just was was, was what do no hellos, everything sucks. Okay, and... okay, Victor, let me tell you this. Yeah. We'll we'll keep it short and sweet because I know this is Kurt's thing. Uh -huh. You know the phone call you got from him the other day. I'm not involved in this. This isn't me. I got nothing to do with it. <laughs> Multiply that by a billion. <laughs> okay. So basically, you know, you were not good at interacting with other people. You were socially awkward. I, I was, I, you know, I. If it hadn't been for my family, I would have been. I would have. I would have. I would have left Japan and and gotten myself a, a little camper in in the Sonoran Desert and checked check out of life and not killed myself, but checked well, out well, of that, but, society. Well, but that's your thing, Kurt. That's your thing. Like you, you could survive on your own if you didn't have your family. Right. You would you would be perfectly happy living back in the Frito Lay truck on the beach. Right. That's true. I mean, that's I how you are. Well, no, I wouldn't be now because I I've got my family, but I and I want to be. No, with I'm saying them. If, if I'm saying if you didn't have your family. Right. 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 Not so, if they were not if they were like abducted by aliens. So just so, right. so, <laughs> so at that point at that point in my life that's what I wanted. I didn't want to participate in the game anymore. I didn't want to be a part right. of any of this anymore. Uh. So so going going to work and pulling down the job. I was doing that for the sake of my family, and I did not want to be. I didn't want to socialize. I didn't want to be friendly. I just wanted to do my lessons, get the hell out of there, and be done. And so right. Molly Molly and the other teacher that was there at the time, Casey. I mean, they just they, they <laughs> Jess, Jessica. I get, yeah, Jess. They just she, I, he called her Patricia for two years. <laughs> yeah, so they couldn't help me, but but I got better. I got kind kind of. I'm still kind of a prick, but you know, especially. Nah, you're, yeah, but but now that I know you, I can't we, imagine he was a prick at all. That's amazing. Oh, I, I'm still a prick at work. Really? Don't you think so, Molly? Uh, you can be, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can be. <laughs> we work together, by the way, in case you haven't picked that up yet. So the only the only thing is, is I I slap him into shape when he when he's acts like that. So I I am much better. You know, you're, you're Molly came up with this this idea, this concept that's been very helpful to me. He calls it the dark passenger. No, no, that, that's from Dexter. Okay, oh, from anyway, Dexter. Okay, but yeah. you applied it to me. I've never seen right. Dexter. And, okay. and you warn me. You say, Kurt, you know, the dark passenger showing up, and I and I catch myself, and I go, Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Thanks, Molly. Dark right. passenger. You you gave him a dark passenger. You're like a serial killer. I didn't give it to him. He's got it. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do have it, but it's it's going away, especially since you and I, Molly has been trying to has been tutoring me over the years on 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 good nutrition and diet, and it's really the, made the fattest guy in the J Vlog community. It's 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 an it's a it's an irony, but I mean there you go. I mean, but no kidding, Molly knows his stuff when it comes to blood sugar and uh, and how to eat well. And he, somebody should tell Molly to listen to Molly. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Well, your advice changed my life, Molly. I mean, it really yeah. has. Well, okay, that's a, that's a, so you started the, but tell us about the Yakuza guy. Because actually you cannot, I don't know if people know this, but you cannot get into the antique business without a license, usually, right. but actually uh, Kurt found a way around that. Well, so you so met Jake I, Edelstein? Huh? You met Jake Edelstein? I, <laughs> the Yakuza guy? 
The Yakuza guy, no, no. Oh, a real Yakuza. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a... Never mind. That's, a... That's okay. So when I came to Japan, I had that nest egg, and I had decided that I wanted to become an antique dealer because I love Japanese old things. So when I got here, I, I didn't know how to start. I love, so I, I love I stuff that nobody else wants in Japan. Right. Exactly. So I, I decided I, I, needed to, I needed to hook up with antiques, so I went to the local shrine flea market, which was twice a month. And that was that's kind of the retail end. I mean, you go to the flea market, and you're dealing with the... They're, actually, those are professional guys. that They yeah. do that for a living. Yeah. I, I learned that later. And so, you know, while I'm there doing that, one day I was talking to this one guy who suddenly started speaking English to me. He lived in uh, overseas for a year. And we got to become friends, and it turned out that he was the son of the of one of the big shots in the local antique community here in Shizuoka. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna mind my words. I'm gonna be careful about what I say because I, I just I just I just think it's safer to do that. I won't give any names, but he invited me to the wholesale antique auction, which is held twice a month in in Shimizu. Oh, right. And which now and that you need a that, license to get into that. You right? need a license to get into that. It's like a lot of those sort of things. Used cars are like that as well. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. But not only unless do you you're need a New Zealander, they let those guys in everywhere. But it's not just the license that you need. You need to, it's a brotherhood, and you yeah. need you need to be admitted into the fraternity of these. It's all men, and uh, so the first night I showed up at this place, which is kind of out in the boonies in this trailer, and it's got this. It's like a whole bunch of shipping containers all welded together, and just everybody smokes and stuff. And I I walked in. I swear to gosh, it was like a gunslinger walking through this gaijin, walking through the doors into this in, in very. Uh, inward little community, and the place stopped. They look at me. The the guy's son came out and introduced me to everybody. You know, he was the f big shots fun mm -hmm. son, mm -hmm. so he introduced me to everybody. They were a little reluctant at first, but after the first night, you know, um, we got on, and I would, did that for five years. I was a regular there. I was kato, and what? Uh, kato. you're what <laughs> kato, right. kato. 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 kato, like kato champe. You know, okay. I I was oh. that's, Kurt is is my, Kato is my name in Japanese. Oh, good Kato. That's really that you're right. That works very well in Japanese, actually. Yeah, yeah. Kurt is a great name for Japanese. I guess I never, never realized that. But you're right. Yeah. Now I, I I always knew that these guys were loosely affiliated with the criminal underworld. They're, How did you not, know? How did you know? Pinky's missing or what? Uh, they know. I was told by other by by, pe by people within that um, by th that that was the case. They're not bad guys. They're not they're not the pinkies missing guys, and they're not going to rub you out, and they're not going to give you any concrete slippers. But they're definitely associated, and there are there are scary people on the that you got to say they're connected. They are connected. He's connected. And, and the one night that I realized that they were connected was this was about three or four years into my association, going there all the time. Mm -hmm. um, one night. I I saw somebody new there. It was an old man, and he was there with a knockout beautiful young woman. Well, this is a problem. And and, and <laughs> now now this place is really tight packed. People are everywhere. But this guy had like an aura around him. Nobody would get close. And he was. Mm. I would always get there early, and everybody would. And we would wander through and pick through the racks to see what was going to go on auction before it went down the auction. So we knew what we wanted to bid on. And he was going through stuff. And eventually, he saw me, and he came over. And it was like a shark going through a school of fish. How the fish all part, part. Wow. You know, you usually have to kind of muscle your way through. As he walked through the crowd, the crowd just there was like magnetism parted in front of him. Wow. And his, this woman followed him, and he came over, and he couldn't speak any English, and I don't speak Japanese very well, but his daughter had lived in uh, overseas for several years, so she kind of translated. It's like and a she, Quentin Tarantino movie. Yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> saying, I'm like, the, the daughter always no, speaks no, English. No, 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 no. <laughs> now, I didn't know who this guy was, and I, and I thought he was just somebody that wanted to practice his English or something like that. And you well, know, I'm saying, the hottie was the daughter? The daughter. Okay. Don't miss with that. So okay. uh, I thought he was somebody that either wanted to practice. Oh, that was his daughter. Or just wanted to spend a little time talking to the foreigner, right? And I'm working, you know. I've only got like 30 minutes before the auction starts, and I want to see what's there, right? right. So I'm kind of blowing him off, you know. I'm like, yeah, yeah, nice. And he's looking. So now he's looking at the stuff right next to me, and he's picking stuff out that I like. You see, I'm looking. He grabs it and he puts it in my pocket. <laughs> now this is stuff that he's basically okay. stealing. He's stealing for me. He's like a reverse burglar. He's actually giving him stuff. That <laughs> no, he's giving he's giving other people stuff to me. Yeah. 
right? So he's, and he's put it into my pockets, right? <laughs> and so, so now I don't want to be, I don't know what to do. So eventually he walks away, but and then I put the stuff back, right? Of course, I'm not going to steal it. So, but he oh, tells me, he te he te and he's, he's dressed like a normal guy. He's not dressed fancy. So he but, tells me, he says, I'm going to be back. He doesn't, he doesn't ask. He tells me, I'm going to be back after the auction to pick you up. And take, I want to take you to my house, okay? I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh crap, you know? It's <sighs> the last you thing I want to do. You don't know he's out there yet, right? I don't know any. I don't know who this guy is, right? So he disappears, right? No. We go through our auction. The auction finishes around 10:30. It takes about half an hour to put all the stuff away, and we have our we all have our closing ceremony. We all clap. It's it's a very ritualized. Oh, really? Thing. Yeah, yeah. It's very interesting. I've always so, wanted to go. To, I've never been to one of those. Before. Oh, it's a, it's you, it's it's fascinating. So anyway, I I walk out afterwards, and there he is leaning against his beat up old piece of crap car, right? And I, the, the the kind of beat up car that you just don't see in Japan. It's a Wal it's the Walmart family. What's the guy's the guy from Walmart? What's his name? Uh, Sam Walton. Yeah, he did the same thing. He drove. He he was rich as hell, but drove around a junky old truck. Yeah. But but you guys know you don't see cars like that in Japan no, unless no, you're no, like You can you you have to go out of your way to to make a car that old and beat up. Oh, right. so you mean it was, it was like the right. so you yeah. it was like the 1970s Toyota Corona rusty kind of like, like yeah yeah it wasn't nice it, it it wasn't it wasn't a collector's item it was a yeah. piece of crap it was like so something I see. Beat up. So for those of you who don't know in Japan they have a yearly shotgun that you have you cannot keep, it's difficult to keep keep old crappy cars they yeah. basically almost force you economically to go buy a new car. Yeah, they nickel and dime you to death. Well, so it's not even nickel and dime, really. So I was really surprised to see this. So he, he gets me in the car. The daughter's not there. He gets me into the car, and we take off, and I don't know how far it's going to go. And he doesn't drive far. We, we go to this one place, and finally the, we go through this like, gate thing, and we start driving up this mountain. Mm -hmm. And he tells me, he says, this is my mountain. And like this is your wow. mountain. I mean, we're still in we're still in the confines of Shimizu, the city right. of Shimizu, right? He says, he says, yeah. So we start going up this mountain, and we come up around the corner, and there it is like out of a Hollywood movie. It is a a, a parking lot full of Mercedes Benz, Porsches, BMWs, all wow. lined up, beautiful cars. And he pulls this piece of crap up right next to it and parks right. <laughs> That's and great. we get out of the car, and there's this, there is this mansion, this concrete cathedral light up there. And we get out, and he starts walking around. He starts flipping these switches that are hidden, and these lights go on, and they spotlight this mountain. And he's going to give me a tour of his waterfalls. He had, he had, he had imported, waterfalls. He had no, not just one, or he had about four. And he had imported all these giant stones from China. The oh Japanese stones weren't good enough. He had to ship them over from China, and he built all these waterfalls and he put more switches and, and huge quantities of water begin to gush over the waterfalls down. And he's got these bridges and then, then his, I'm making the short story short, but then his wife comes down with his daughter and they've got this tray full of tea and she's just, the wife is just so beautiful and elegant and the daughter is beautiful and elegant and I'm still not catching on that this guy's, you know, Criminal, right? Well, the thing is, even that, like in, in in country towns, like even like supermarket owners become like super wealthy. So you're not quite, you know, you could have a yeah. family. It still isn't clearly criminal yet, although it's impressive. Right, right, it's right. right. So, so we sit down and we, the long story short, we have tea, okay? And and I still then I didn't realize and the daughter gives me, and, and I remember the one scary moment was when the daughter, when she daughter gave me her contact information, which was cool. At one point, she looks to her dad and she says, she says. Maybe my father can help you with your business. And he got mad. I mean, he got suddenly turned angry. He's in Japanese, he's saying, I'm not going to help him. What am I? What are you saying that for? There's no way I'm going to help him. He's on his own. He got really mad. Mm -hmm. and, and anyway, finished up. He put me back in his car, and he drove me back down. By then, the, the, the antique place is empty. The auction house is empty. He, he lets me go and goodbye. That's, and I learned later that that was his slumming car. That, was, that car was the yeah. car he used when he was slumming. Now, it, it, wasn't, few foreigners, right? <laughs> it, it wasn't until I was up at a party. Can I tell him, Molly? A party at your house? Go ahead. It wasn't until I was at a party at Molly's house a few years later that I told the same story, and there's the, one of your friends. His eyes kind of began to open up like this, and he and he started asking me some questions. And he's like, "Do you do you realize who you were with?" <laughs> yeah. 
And he told Moly's friend was the one that told me that this guy is not only one of the biggest yakuza in Japan, but he's also one of the most dangerous men in Japan. Wow. And he and and, and while I was there, he told me this guy told me he was bragging. He said that this house that he had is the largest house in Japan outside of Tokyo. Wow. Yeah. So, so that's, that's why they call you Softy Papa now. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, uh, you know, when I first chose the name Softy Papa back in 2003, my wife, the first thing my wife says, you know, she said, you're, n no one, you're never going to hear the end of, uh, of limp dick stories, right? <laughs> Not once in all those years have anyone said it. You know? Now they're going to stop. Ex yes, except me. Never occurred to me. What? No one's ever said, no one's ever made the connection between Softy Papa and limp dick? No one's ever said that, except kind of, you just alluded Only, to it now. No, we all said, we've all said it, just maybe not on your channel. I, I, I never get it in comments, nobody says it. Pico's always like, oh, tonight we're having limp dick on tonight. I said, yeah, limp dick on tonight. <laughs> But just but seriously, it never occurred to me. That's not easy. Just to <laughs> yeah, it's Molly, yeah. No, no, Molly, Molly calls. What do you call me sometimes, Molly? Softy Limpy. No, you call me Limpy Noodle. Yeah, Limpy oh, <laughs> Noodle. Limpy Noodle. That's it. So that's my story, Victor. <laughs> that's a good story. That's, that's a good story. That's a great story. It's amazing, and this is actually, and I kind of so this guy who I mentioned before, who's I'm hoping to get on at some point. He's one of the. Authorities. He's a, he's a freelance journalist who used to report for the Yomiuri Shimbun. He's written a book about being hunted down um, by by the yakuza after reporting on them. Mm -hmm. um, but um, he's one of these guys. For a time when I, I didn't know what to make of him when I first heard of him, he's one of these guys who's like, "You tell me anything, and I'll show you." What Jack Adelstein. Talking about Jack Adelstein. Jack Adelstein. This guy. So it was exactly. Well, the like Daily Show. But he was on the Daily Show. But it's kind of this thing, and I, you know, I I I, I was taken to a friend. I've, I mean, I've had a more. You know, a, a similar but quite a dramatic story where a friend took me to uh, his old Arubaito place, which was just a tsuribori, like in the middle of nowhere, just fishing, you know, like a, you know, a fishing place. You pay some money, you catch some carp, you put them back, you do whatever, you go away. And then I come home and they say, well, what did you do today? And, oh, yeah, Chikara, he took me to his old place. It was a, you know, it was a tsuribori, and everyone, like, froze. And they said it was a fishing place? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, the one in, the one in Uratako, just behind, the, behind, you know, up that back road. Oh my God, that place is yakuza. <laughs> oh really? What are they? I didn't see anyone shooting any fish. I, I mean, what? But, but you know, <laughs> it's funny. Like you're in antiques, and you know, you hear about this with used cars. You hear about this. I mean, somehow everything, everywhere, genuinely, you can make some sort of a connection with that. My my experience, Hiko, is that for the most part, the guys that are making their living doing this are are not like what you the the stereotype you know they're regular guys it's more it's more of like a a community of where they're going to support one another and look after one another and and that kind of thing and the things when you get into old places like places with a history which kind of central tokyo is less so but pretty much you know again rural places or even like you know or western japan um but, and this is the thing you know they're not like movie mafia things at all they've been, they're, they're embedded in the community and have been for a yes. long time and they're just an element they're just another guy that you deal with you take maybe some special care with that guy like like parting through the <laughs> through the crowd like you're talking about and trying not but to piss just, him off or scratch his but, car but yeah. that's just how it's always been you know it's not it's not a new thing or you know and it's just and, and they're they're a part of the community too they've got their own part in it I did what I did notice however was the flamboyance there was hmm. not all of them but it's some of them, and particularly the higher ups, mm -hmm. had this kind of a cocky, flamboyant, you know, yeah. showmanship. And I think that that was kind of a bravado to kind of, you know, it, it's kind of like strutting their stuff. Um, more show mm -hmm. for their peers than anybody else. Yeah, you know? well, it asserts their status, I guess. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That was interesting to me. A little, a little bit intimidating that's, sometimes. That's something I, don't, I don't really get that. Like, guys who are really in power, why do they seem to... To flash, you know, to show off. You think they've got all that power? You don't need to do it anymore, right? Well, I guess it's more show. It's like a like a like a the the, the pride lion, you know. That if he can if he can display his main hmm. man in, in 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 a masculine manner, then he won't get in a fight. Well, and because inside because inside, inside they don't have it. <laughs> hmm. oh, sorry, I gotta say. By the way, I, I like okay. And I, I don't know you that well. I've met you a couple of times, and I've, I've seen your videos, and I, I, I like you, and I think you're a really interesting guy. So I've seen your videos talking about, like, philosophy and religion, and I've seen your bushwalking videos about and everything. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I don't know. I just had this idea that this conversation today was going to be about, like, bushwalking and philosophy, which would have been a great video, and I was looking forward to it. 
man, you've got some really, really good stories that I would have expected story, yeah. you'd have to tell. That's really awesome. Oh, thank you. And I'm not wearing pants either. <laughs> I think I think we I think he's That's uh, a Shizoka thing. Yeah, it is. But thank you. you know, I'm not wearing pants it. either. Yeah. Here's I, one of the strangest um, backhanded compliments I'm going to give you, Kurt. Okay. <laughs> your Japanese <laughs> sucks. Oh I, yeah. Your Japanese oh. sucks. However. Yeah. However. You are full of Japanese information. You know all this stuff that I've... I mean, I've been here longer than I think everybody in the room, except Molly, maybe. But um, uh, you know all these little details about things that I never knew about. Like like today, you, you mentioned something called night crawling. Right. I'd never heard of... Let, let's find out. Hiko, do you know what night crawling is? Uh, maybe not. Uh, I associated with drinking, which I guess... Uh, Molly, uh, did you know? Uh, Molly, maybe not. No? Well, no. Okay, so I never heard of it, but it's a Japanese uh, tradition. Please tell us about Nightcrawlers. Well, I'm, I'm, I suspect both Molly and Hiko have probably heard of this. It's, uh, I don't remember how to say it in Japanese, because as Victor said, my Japanese is pretty bad. But it, you, you remember <laughs> back, back in the old days, it was a tradition uh, where young men would... Uh, old create, days, like hundreds of years ago, right? Yeah. And maybe may, 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 may a little more recent in some places, but uh, where young men would uh, creep through uh, a house in the middle of the night to uh, seek out the uh, young women in the house. Ah. Why still do that? <laughs> that, that, that is that is a popular uh, uh, what is it, uh, adult video search term. I think I I, I can't remember really? the word, but I know that there was a word for it. Yes, I'll think of creeping into someone's bed. Just go to your yes. computer and type in a few letters. It'll come up. <laughs> Uh, well, it's associated recently with searched, it's, recently searched. It's associated with one of the one of the world's and certainly Japan's uh, worst mass murders, where there was the young man. I think this was in the twenties, where in the course of an hour and a half, he cut the power in this small village. In the course of an hour and a half, uh, he he killed over thirty people with a shotgun, a samurai sword, and an axe. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reason he did that was because he had. Um, he had been he had been engaging in this night calling thing, and when he got tuberculosis, the young women of the village uh, would turn him down his advances, and uh, so he sought out vengeance. And he cut off the first victim was his grandmother who had raised him. And he said later the reason, or apparently in his suicide note, the reason he killed his grandmother wasn't because he had anything against her. He, he didn't, didn't want her to see it. He didn't want her to live with the shame. Ah, uh, I see. Oh, that's close. That's yeah. Consider it. Exactly. But that's so that's uh, the night calling thing. <laughs> He was concerned. Wow. So crawling through houses, like I never knew that one. The other thing I never knew was about the 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 mask. Uh, what is a mask called? I forgot. Hanya. 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 Now let's 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 test Hiko and, and uh, Molly because they're they're old hats at this. Hanya, why do they have horns? Are you asking me? Yes. I don't know. I didn't know either. I haven't the slightest. Yeah. Well, well, just a minute. How do you spell Hanya? Is it Hanya or H A N N Y A? Hanya. Hanya. If Hanya, so it's like half. Okay, let me um, let me throw up a picture so everyone can see. I, I've got special software here because people are not going to know what this is. Uh, where's my? Well, while Victor's doing that, back to the night crawling thing, uh -huh. we should actually probably know something about that. If you watch the Bakatono every year, they always do some kind of gag with that. That's right. That's right. The what? You know, where he, where he's, yeah, like where he's crawling through the through the castle at night, going for the girls, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Wow. And you know, Molly, that's an interesting point. It's kind of like the what is it? Uba sat. I can't can't say the Japanese word. The abandoning grandma on the mountain. Oh, uh, uh, still must it. Yeah, it's kind of like that, where it's kind of it's developed into the culture in a way, and it can kind of almost be satirized in in because I think mm. I think Shimura Ken does that as well, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he does. Yeah. Yeah. He where he takes her out and comes back, and she's always back at the house. Oh, yeah, she's run, she's running through the forest, right? It's, it's, <laughs> she's it's, running on the trail above him. Samui, Samui, it's cold outside. <laughs> But the but the mask thing I won't give it away yet, Victor. But I'll just lead into it. The mask is used. Yeah, in, 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 yeah, it, 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 it's used. It's similar to the masks you have back there, but it's actually a, a woman's face, and it's got a mixture of, uh, of both agony and pain at the same time. If you look at it, really well-made Hanya masks capture two emotions: uh, anger and, and that's not agony, anger and pain simultaneously. And they'll always have those horns, and it's not necessarily because they're demons. Can I give it away, well, Victor? 
Uh, hold on, I'm almost there. Um, you want to get the mask? So, so <laughs> these masks. Yeah, I lost for some reason. This uh, G Google has closed this application I usually use here. So, so, so don't, don't you have, you have to reach out behind yeah, you? Suspense is killing me. There. Okay, you go. Hold on, yeah, it's almost there. It's almost, I'm right there, ready. Well, here it is. Ta-da! This is the Hanya. Press. Beautiful. Right, right, Beautiful. right. Beautiful. Okay, so that's it. <laughs> so, it's a it's a combination of of pain, and anger, and pain. Anger. Pain. I never anger. noticed before until you mentioned it. Yeah. I always thought it just looks like you know, like that. Uh, like and it's a woman. I didn't know it was a woman. It's a yeah. woman. It's a woman. It's not. It's not necessarily a demon. Hmm. It's a woman. So well, why the horns? Okay. So there's a connection. Okay. If you look at the traditional Japanese bridal out costume, you'll mm -hmm. notice it has the large white hooded what? bit. Right. That is specifically designed to hide. The horns of jealousy. Mm. So, if the bride in during her during her uh, nuptials, I don't know if that is nuptial sex, nor is that can can the vows, the vows. Yeah, so if she if she if she like feels a little bit jealous about her groom, they don't want the uh, attending audience to see her horns sprout out of her head. Mm. So they have that big thing up there to kind of protect it, and uh, that's 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 the connection. <laughs> is that is that right? Is that what you mean? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So nice. the hunt, the hunt. I would take it with horns. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hides the horns. Huh? Well, I thought it was the man that has the horn problem. I don't know, just a single. Horn. We're more of a unicorn issue. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting story, right? So, so, so the mask is basically a woman scorned. That's what the mask is. Mm. Wow, well, I had no idea. I had no idea. Hell hath no fury. Hell, hell, yeah, hell, no. What, what? Hell hath no fury. Hell hath no fury like a woman. Hell hath scorned. no fury like a woman scorned. Yeah. Now, for those of you who don't know, um, Softy Pamba has a ten thousand dollar video. That I do. Yes, he has, and it's the most ridiculous piece of shit. <laughs> it was a drunken joke. Yes, please explain this video. Um, <laughs> I had rich story here. Yeah, no, I had a. Uh, um, if you're, if people aren't familiar, I'm I'm very interested in in insects, and so when I came to Japan, I was delighted to discover that the world's largest hornets are found here. So I became that became a passion for me, and in the fall, I, when I'm hiking, I sometimes find the the dead hornets and the dying hornets on the ground, and I had found one one day, and I brought it home with me. And I was just kind of playing with it on my desk, you know, examining the different parts and stuff like that, because I'm into that kind of stuff. And I had put it on my finger, and I and I had noticed that it stayed on my finger. And when I pulled it back, it looked like it was alive. And I realized, wow, I could have some fun with this. And I was a little bit drunk, so I got my iPhone out, and I just went, snap here, and I put the hornet on my nose, and snap here, I put it on my beer. And my wife had pizza, so I put it on the pizza, and then I put it in iMovie here, and I just <laughs> rendered the video and put it up on 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 I'm YouTube. Sorry. The hornet was dead. It was dead, but in the in in the photos, it looks like it's alive. Right. No right. music, no editing, nothing. And I called it my pet Suzume Bachi. And and a lot and of people I, believe it was actually a pet too. Yeah, yeah, they did. So wow. that video went viral. And uh, remained viral for several years. It's no longer really viral. It's it doesn't get the hits it used to. But um, how many views big, you got on that? There. Oh, there you go. Um, it's got close to three million now uh, on it. And uh, the best the best month I had. I mean, I don't mind. This this video doesn't make a lot of money anymore. But I will just I'll show I'll share the numbers with you guys on that particular video. That it's made well over ten thousand dollars. The best month I had was one month. It made two thousand five hundred, two thousand six hundred to be exact. In one Isn't month. that amazing? Yeah, just yeah. that one video. Just one video. Yeah. I'm looking and at it now. It's got your iPhone. Yeah, with my, three million total, views now. Yeah. To, total joke. You know. Yeah. Pictures taken with your iPhone and edited an iMovie on the iPhone and uploaded in a drunken stupor. Yeah, to, to Twitter. And so that particular photo right there, that one has that one he, now. Hiko, he how much time do we put into our videos? <laughs> too much, too much, and, and spend too much money on cameras and lenses. Yeah, so you got a great Luminex camera, right? I did. That, I did. That, that, that particular photo right there was on the Young Turks recently. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm not really? a, your stuff comes up everywhere. I'm on the Young it. Turks? What were you yeah. doing on the Young Turks? They were doing. They were doing. Were you a arrested? Segment. They were doing a segment on uh, the giant hornets, and they somehow they grabbed my photo and put it up there. But that's <laughs> at least they attribute. At least they didn't attribute it to the Japan Channel. 
<laughs> Tell him that story. Don't go there. Don't go there. Tell him that. No, no, no. He's, it's, a, it's a real story. Oh, really? It just happened a week ago. Right? It just happened oh, last no. week. Um, do you know that you guys, you, guys, you guys know the show Hanamaru Market? Oh. Yeah. And so last week on Friday, they, they contacted me and asked if they could put a video of mine on their show. And so they, they ran it, and my, I didn't see it. My wife saw it first. She recorded it for me. And later she was laughing, and she she, she played it back. And, and what happened was they put my video up, and they contacted me. So they knew who I was, but it shows my video. And then at the bottom it says, thejapanchannel.com. Oh, that's that's not hilarious. Like, no, I don't mind. I don't mind. He, he well, and I are friends. It's just a courtesy, but yeah. Yeah, he's like his only friend. So, uh, he and he and, he and, are, he and are, I, I consider him a good friend, and uh, um, I don't mind that kind of stuff. Doesn't bother me at all. I, I actually thought that was the best part of the whole thing that they. That's would, that is like I, I would. I would think the same thing. I wouldn't. I would. I think that I would. Think I, I, I would hunt him down like the dog he is. But that's just me. That's just, you know, oh, it wasn't his fault. It wasn't. It wasn't his fault. Of course, it was the producer's fault. Because because there was a really segment imme immediately prior to immediately previous to mine was a segment of his. So they just made a mistake and just forgot mm. to, you know. So. Right, right. But it was okay. funny. It was funny. <laughs> My video was on just before that and it said Hiko Simon. Hiko makes it up all the time it happens. Yeah. Right. It's the beard. That's yes. Right. So uh, we should wrap this up because you got you got to work tomorrow. But um, we've been out for over an hour. But I, wow. but I, what do you what are you going to miss about Japan besides your family, of course? Oh, <laughs> well, they go um, with them, I think. Well, they'll go eventually. They're not going immediately. I'm going to oh, miss. Really? I'm going to miss the. I'm going to miss the Japanese yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. He's you're you're going to leave your kids behind for your ki your wife and your your daughter for about three months or so, right? Uh, it'll all depend on how quickly we can do the immigration stuff, and I've got uh, two attorneys I'm in contact with, and I got some great news from an attorney today who, is, who, is, is, who, who, who has gave me some information that may help us fast-track things. My wife had a green card before, and it's, uh, you know, can it, help. it's expired, so yeah. So, but it all will depend on how quickly we can get that stuff taken care of. But if it all goes smoothly, Emily and Yumiko should be joining me in early spring or um, middle of summer. Hopefully, get in time for Emily to start school in September. Great. Oh, good, good, good. As to what I'm going to miss most, um, without besides the consumer batches. With um and yeah. us of course besides us of course the JVlog community of course honestly I'm going to miss the Japanese people I mean the great the, answer. Even though I don't speak Japanese very well, uh, that doesn't stop me from appreciating the the warmth, the sincerity, the selflessness, and the generosity of my hosts for the last decade. And uh, um, I know that there's probably no no other people like this on quite on anywhere on earth. And although it's people are all around the world, I I am really really going to miss uh, the Japanese people. Mm. Well, they'll still be here. They will. They will. And they'll, be, and they'll be there too. Actually, they're going to be in, right in your town. That's right. That's right. But it won't be the same. Um, uh, and and I'm going to miss. I'm going to miss the experience of uh, of of life here and of uh, of the stuff that I currently take for granted. That now that I'm counting down the days, I have less like than a crime? month. Like <laughs> crime, like low crime, low to no crime. You know, it's it's more it's the more subtle stuff like that. Like just this morning, walking to work and standing at the train, waiting for the train to pass, listening to the sound, the ding, 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 watching the crossing gate, seeing the train pass with all the people inside. Um, I'm looking over to the right and seeing Mount Fuji, which I see every day. Um, you know, watching the sun come up on Mount Fuji, which I see every day. Uh, you know, the the more you know the, the stereotypical things, but then more than that, the subtle things. You know. This is what I like about you. You're a you, you strike me as a meditative guy, and mm -hmm. you know, and I can appreciate how in some contexts and in some ways that could make you act like a, a, a prick. Sometimes you're in a low period and you're not interfacing with people well, but that's what's good. You know, you, the fact that you go into your own world and you think about stuff. And when you express that stuff, that makes it very interesting because you observe well and you, you know, you're that kind of a guy. That's how you come across to me. Not Thank knowing you. you very well, but that's what I enjoy. And I tell you what, and I just want to say, when we started, when Victor and I started this thing, uh, nearly three years ago this now. Thing with the this thing of ours. This thing of ours. This little, you know, a little, <laughs> not Cosa Nostra of ours. Um, you know, <laughs> it was... Uh, for me, the whole objective of the show was to get interesting people and to let them tell stories. And that was right. kind of because to me, there's no better JVlog video than some guy with a crappy webcam sitting down and just telling a really interesting story. And your webcam is pretty crappy. It, it is. is pretty crappy. So it's pretty <laughs> crappy. 
<laughs> and I don't know. I mean, what, what I love is I thought I had an expectation of what to expect from this, and I knew it was going to be good, whatever it was. But yeah, you've just come and you've told like five or six really, really stories which have really gripped me, and I'm sure they've gripped everyone who's been watching. He's got a dozen yeah. more. We need, we got to get this guy back on. <laughs> He's got two or three, four more. I don't know. No, I, I mean, t- I've heard him a dozen times. <laughs> but, um, these are awesome. I, I tell you, I've, I've I've been gripped, and it's been a real pleasure to have you on. I mean, it's a, this is my favorite favorite kind of show. I'm going to watch this back because I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to watch it again. I, I really enjoyed it, so thank you very much, and really all the best. Well, uh, there's an open thank you, thank you, Hiko. There's an open invitation to anyone of you guys and anyone who hears this to come uh, have some beers with me on the pier at Redondo Beach, and we can oh, watch the uh, do- we can watch the dolphins swim by, and the surfers finishing off the day, and we can even spear a couple dolphins. Don't do the dolphins right now. Don't mention dolphins. We can share some stories. Thank you, Hiko. I appreciate that. It's been, I, an, honor. It's been one, an honor and a privilege to be here. One big request, though. I I heard a rumor that you were thinking of deleting your channel. Tell me that is not true, because no. that would be a crime. No, the word I would I, have to, we'd have to kill you. I think I'd I'd put a hit out on you. The word. <laughs> what is the that? Word, what is, it's an it's an you know, as, as my my old professor my speech communication professor. Peter Losey always used to say the uh, the message sent is never the message received. The, the the word that I actually used was um, retired, and I have uh, I have several channels that are specifically Japan related channels that I will no longer be creating content for. So I will be retiring those channels, which simply means I won't be making any new content, and I won't be I've I, I've 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 gone through and cleaned up all of the videos, cleaned up all the channel, and I'll be basically just walking away from it, and then that'll be it. Okay, that. okay, good, good. Now, someone told me it's a shame he's talking about you know erasing his channel. I said, what? No, no way. Uh, I never heard about that. I'm not going to delete genius. anything. No, it's not going to delete anything. I hope you don't mind me saying that I have not seen all 6,000 of your videos yet. I'm, I've, I've seen maybe, a, maybe 300 of them. That's that's okay. I don't I don't expect anybody anybody to have. Although I did get an email from someone who told me he had all six thousand or whatever however many there are it downloaded and on 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 a drive somewhere. So oh, really? yeah, that was there was a copyright violation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know, but, but you know, I don't either. But no, but the, yeah, just yeah. just to clarify though, guys, um, going forward, when I move, my goal is to get all the Japan related stuff finished before I leave. And then when I go to the States, I'll be active on the Kurt Bell channel, which is formerly the Softy Papa channel. It's not just mm-hmm. Kurt Bell. That that will be my active channel. All the other channels will still be there, but I won't be active there. So if you if people mm-hmm. still want to keep up, that's the channel to watch. What what is YouTube.com slash Kurt Bell or Softy Papa? That's a good question. It's, it's Softy Papa, Kurt. Yeah, I just checked. It's Softy Papa. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you, Molly. Oh, good. That's okay, a your, your, your channel really address doesn't that, change. No. Oh, it doesn't. No. Okay. I was trying to get no. away from that limp noodle image, you know. Oh, well. Yeah. When you when you linked well, it over to Kurt Bell, it. it's, it's still softy Papa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So I'll put that in the description. Everyone, please check him out. He's got great stories. So a lot of these stories are on. Also, which which would you say is your most? Uh, where, where do you tell the stories on? Lyle's Brothers. Yeah, the Lyle's Brother channel is is the is the is the, is the story channel. That's the channel that I I want I I, I want to to show my daughter if I when she's old enough. Yeah. That's 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 the me. The the other stuff is is me being is me doing stuff. This is a facade, right? This is your hookers and blow channel. Softy Papa's Softy Papa's adventure at Ban in Japan is a, is urban exploration. Real Japan monsters is animals. Lyle's brother is just me. Great. Um, I'll have to get those links. Well, no, I, I can find them. I can find them all. Yeah. Anyway, thanks yeah. thanks for joining us. Thank Thank you. you. It's an honor to have you. We are really, I mean, I don't know about Molly, but I'm sad to see you go. Molly said you're an asshole. (laughs) Well, Molly and and I will forever be connected. He's one of those guys that is lifelong connection wherever we are. Like two uh, poodles who have success. There's no no way that Molly can be done with me just because I'm going to be on the other side of an ocean. And I was just going to say to Hiko and Victor, uh, I've pretty much stayed my place and kept quiet most of the evening, <laughs> but I want to get I want to get this in yes. before it's over. Kurt, for the past uh, couple of years, you and I have worked together side by side. At first, it was rough; we didn't get along very well, but we grew to know each other. I've grown to love you as a great friend, and I am going to miss you. Yeah, I'm going to miss brother. you really bad. You too, brother. Uh, I, not- I hate to see you go. I'm not. I'm. I'm not looking forward to the 21st, which is my last day of work. So, right. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. 
No cameras that day. <laughs> it's you know, it's a new beginning. That's what yeah. it is. Exactly. What a bum bummer way to, to end a video. <laughs> but I'm not going to suck your dick. <laughs> okay. There, there you how's go. that? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Now we're back. We're back on track. <laughs> yeah. One last thing about Softy Papa. He comes off as a very, I think, a, a gentleman. You know, wouldn't you say? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> But he's 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 as dirty minded as anybody I know. So, and I oh. mean I mean that as a compliment. Oh, you guys, you guys, Molly knows. I mean, this oh is, yeah, this is not. Yeah, I I am not. I I, I am not. He's like a this. great guy to hang out with. You might think he's like a, a little a little uh, square a little bit. I, I don't let, mean that as an insult, but let me put it like, to you like this. Sometimes yeah. I have to reel him in, and if I have to reel somebody in, that means they're doing, they're going, they've passed the line. Yeah, when yeah, I he can hang with TKO uh, Sam, no problem. That's there's a saying. reason. There's a reason for this, guys. I'll just briefly explain the reason. When I started the Softy Papa channel, which was my first channel on YouTube, I, I, I got the demographic had a lot of kids, and uh, there were a lot of children watching. So I trained myself to be a G-rated channel. So mm -hmm. now, whenever that went on for a while, and so whenever there's the camera light on, I am I. It's Disney time, you know. I am in I am in I am in Mickey Mouse mode. When the camera goes off, it's no holds barred. <laughs> Well, you know, that's the one thing that I picked up from you in this whole YouTube thing is to keep my channel clean. Mm. Even you saying that just now, however, and you're saying it so with such great diction and, and posture, and it still it still does sound like uh, the, the father from the Brady family saying, you know, when, when the lights go out, I get down and I party. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I I I want to I want to show that side to you guys. Come 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 come. I'm I'm I'll reiterate. Please come visit me, and we will we will California. paint we will paint the town uh, whatever color you guys want. Vagina pink. Okay. Well, this Saturday night at the cheer, right, Kurt? That's right. That's right. Yeah. If you guys anybody anybody that's free, come on down. We're having we're having another one at the Bronx. The last cheer. one. The real last one. This is supposed to be Molly and I, just just the two of us. But it's uh it's 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 groaning again, huh? Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to schedule another one, a secret one between just you and me. Right, right. Yeah, yeah I think I think our, our private one will be Kokoichi. There you go. Yep, yep. Right. With, our, oh. with our favorite waitress. Thanks so much for coming on. Um, Hiko, who's on next week? Do we have a guest yet? Not lined up yet, but uh, as usual, we will find a quick last minute you, package. You, you better find package. someone good. It's gonna. This is a hard act to follow. It is. It is. Well, <laughs> maybe I'll go for the opposite end of the spectrum. I don't know. We'll see what we can do. <laughs> a hot female. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this has been such a pleasure to come on board. I mean, you guys made. I usually I never stay up this late, and uh, I feel like I feel like uh, dawn is just frozen, and I, my energy is here. You guys made me very happy. Thank you so much. I really it this is a great, happy. Thank you, man. Thanks, a great way to close us. off my time. We'll be. We'll see you next week. Thanks a lot, Kurt. I'm sure we'll talk before you leave. And okay. peace out to everyone. Good night. Okay. Good night, guys. Where's the off button? Oh, oh there, there is. is. You know, you're not gonna have an awkward. <laughs>